Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's January 9th, um, 2013, and we're having a special early show. I, I want to go around and uh, have people quickly introduce themselves. Uh, we're, we're starting, I'm Paul Allison, I'm here in New York City where it's uh, 5 o'clock and I just got home, still a little sweaty from my run, um, but, uh, but uh, glad to have you all here. We're going to be talking about quad blogging and, uh, and more generally how we can all work together more so our kids can, can uh, interact with each other. I think is uh, how I introduce that. And there are a few more people, maybe coming, maybe not, but we got plenty of uh, amazingly smart people right here already. So welcome, um, Cliff. Why don't you start? Introduce yourself a little bit. Cool. Hi, um, I'm Cliff Manning, I'm director at MakeWaves. Uh, MakeWaves is a safe social learning platform that's free for schools around the world for five to nineteen year olds. Um, so we have a community of about 50, 55,000 young people who are creating blogs, stories, videos, podcasts, etc. Uh, mostly from the UK, but around the world. Um, so we're really interested in how we can uh, help them reach a bigger audience all the time and support them and support teachers in innovative new ways as well. So uh, really interested. And in, uh, yeah, the quad blogging thing is something we've tried and. Uh, kind of in networks and things. So really interested in other people's ideas on how we can get more audience for the young people. Deputy Manning, welcome. Mitchell. Hi. Mitchell, sorry. <laughs> Manning Mitchell, sorry. Deputy Mitchell, how'd you get the name Deputy David Mitchell? Welcome. Well, hi there, uh, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Deputy Mitchell came because I am, uh, well, was a deputy head teacher. Um, I think you call him vice vice principal, possibly, um, but that's the name given to my position when I arrived at Heathfield Primary School three and a half years ago. And there are my name's David Mitchell, and there are quite a few famous David Mitchells around. A comedian in the UK has taken all the Twitter IDs. Um, <laughs> real David Mitchell, the real David Mitchell, David the real, you know, all this kind of stuff. So. I thought I'd use Deputy Mitchell because I was using my Twitter handle uh, fairly professionally, really, not um, doing much, um, you know, ranting or anything like that. I was very much using it to promote children's work from my school, and it stuck with me now. And people know me as Deputy Mitchell. Um, in fact, people call me my first name is Deputy. That's what they think I'm called. <laughs> um, so I'm quite happy with that. But I've um, I've been. I was deputy head at Heathfield Primary School in um, in, Wig in Bolton, actually, uh, just near Manchester in the UK for three and a half years. I've just left that now. Um, I've got a headship um, starting in February in um, Lancaster, which is further north of the UK, um, for six months. I'm just doing some temporary cover there. Um, I'm working freelance now on a mission to get more children blogging. Um, working with schools, conferences, uh, trying to get as many children blogging as possible and teachers blogging. So that's a bit of my background. And you do run the site um, quadblogging.org, is that right? Dot uh, net, yes. Dot net, okay. Um, yeah, that, that came up uh, about two years ago. Um, a school that was struggling for audience, uh, but their blog was sensational. They're doing some great things. And they just didn't have any. Um, people go into their site and I had a few contacts at very good blogging schools I just gave them a phone call and said can we send our kids to this this school site um, but there were four of us in total which I thought well kind of quad nearly around <laughs> um, and that's where it was born and after sharing it on Twitter people said they wanted to do some and it just grew and grew and grew and I think there's over a hundred thousand children that have done it in the last 12 months wow. um, from 40 countries, just through Twitter network, really. But if you look at the spreadsheets of um, schools that are involved, about 50% of the people there don't have Twitter IDs, which is quite nice. It's not just linked to Twitter now. It's getting out there to other people. And, uh, you know, some quads work really, really well. Some don't. Uh, it all depends on who you've got in your quad and... And things like that, but you know, it's it's growing each time. 
Um, Say that again. Some quads do what? Some quads work very well. Work. Okay. Um, some just don't seem to click and work. Um, you know, just like some classes that blog do it very well, and some mm -hmm. fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, trying to find ways of getting schools doing this better, just like Cliff. You know, trying to get more schools blogging um, and quad blogging is one avenue they can go to to get a quick leg up to an audience, really. Mm -hmm. Gail, welcome. Hi, everybody. Gail Dazzler, go ahead. So I'm out in um, sunny California, not so sunny today where I am. I'm up in the Sierra foothills, and I'm, I'm at home today. So I'm, I'm halfway between Sacramento, the state capital, and Lake Tahoe. And I work, my daytime job is I'm a tech integration uh, support specialist for the Elk Grove School District, which is the largest school, public school district in Northern California, very large. Um, and so I'm really thrilled to have all of you here together to have this conversation because um, I've been working with Sue for a long time with Edublogs, um, bringing teachers on board. and. You know, as a as a teacher, my passion is getting student voices beyond the walls of the classroom. And about a little over fifty percent of our schools are Title One high poverty schools. And I know you you know I do workshops, get teachers set up with their edge blogs. They're all excited, and then um, they start to get discouraged when nobody comes to their blogs. So, you know, when I saw the quad, and I have, you know, I, I know that um, there are a number of blogging challenges that are out there, you know, some offers for kids and teachers to get involved, but when I saw the quad blogging, um, oh, it was, it was through a post, an edu, uh, Edutopia post from Susie Boss, and I looked at that, it just seemed so amazingly simple, you know, the setup, and, um, well, I want to do it. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I I need to be able to to um, to offer this to teachers. You know, ways to get their their kids connected, and that you know that we're really promoting global citizenship this way. So, since you don't have students yourself, when you say you want to do it, what what are the intermediary steps there? Um, well, just contacting you know all of. Um, we actually, it's very easy for me to contact the teachers in my district who are who have blogs because we offer okay. EduBlog campuses, EduBlog, and I'm an administrator, mm -hmm. so you know it's very easy for me to contact them. And um, you know, I I just sent out an email uh, for people whose blogs were starting to look a, a little in, inactive, and either they wanted a brush up or they just said, yeah, you know, I kind of got discouraged because I have haven't had much act. So you know they need to meet people like Linda Yolis and talk to her kids. And, yeah. Nice, and <laughs> nice slide over there. <laughs> nice segue. Okay, hi Linda, welcome. You're still at school. Where are you? <laughs> yes, I hope you can guess it. I'm still at school, not my home. Um, I it's about two ten here. I'm just outside of Los Angeles in a suburb. I teach a 2-3 split, so I have second and third graders in my room. It's the fifth class that I've taken through um, the blogging process. And, um, you know, I, it's about having that audience. It is, it is so important to have that audience. I saw it immediately when I had a cluster map on my blog, and we had two dots. And I saw the heads snap around in this classroom when they thought, they had these readers, and one was from Japan, one was from Arizona, and the kids were just thrilled. And I immediately realized the magic and the power of blogging and that having an audience, how important it is. And I have done quad blogging. I kind of did it organically through just some friends that I had, and we loved Deputy Mitchell's idea, and so we put four together. But it's a great way to bring four classes together and start working on relationships and building readerships and friendships because you're right if you publish and nobody comments or it's kind of a flat line it is discouraging and people don't want to so I have a class blog and I have a um, photo of the day blog what, what grade again 
I missed second and third graders. Second and third graders. So, um, you so all of your second and third grade. These are edu blogs, or what? What platform you want? You know, I started in two thousand eight, and I didn't know anything about blogging. And I I joined this little class, and they said, you know, start a blog. So I started on Blogger, and I have just stuck with Blogger just because I've kept sure. the same blog. But um, yeah, both of them are on Blogger, and I have kids earn their own blogs through participation in our class blog, and then uh -huh. the parents take over, and the parents become the administrators of the blog. So the blogs can continue and be supported through parents after they leave me. Plus, it's a lot of work, as we all know, to monitor blogs, and so I like to bring that parent component in. Great. Uh, we'll come back to you with lots of ideas and questions. I think Matt, welcome from KidBlog as well. Hi, yeah, I'm Matt Hardy, um, co-founder of KidBlog. I'm, I was a third, fourth, fifth grade teacher, sort of back and forth there uh, for nine years. And uh, KidBlog came out of the need for my own my own use as a teacher to get my students um, uh, publishing content online for the same reasons that have been mentioned here. That that audience really matters. And um, initially, the, the impetus behind KidBlog was the concept of getting students online, but also making sure that, you know, several years ago was when the cloud was still very scary, and, and getting kids to create content online was, was a, a tough sell. And so KidBlog is built around the, uh, the need for teachers to be able to mon moderate anything that's going on in their, in their class blogging space. Um, but also give students that authentic voice and a real audience for their writing. And so, um, yeah, so at KidBlog, the, the focus is sort of a, the class, but it really is more of a, a feed that each individual blogging spaces. And so that class sort of aggregate component, but it's also really focused on students having ownership over their own blogging space. Great. Um, and th I think this is your third show, so I think we can call you a friend of TTT. By the time. All right, nice. I get, yeah, so I don't even need to do Ooh. that intro anymore. I'll just check the, old, check the old tapes. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for coming back again. Um, and uh, David, uh, as you and others, as you're thinking about this, uh, I, I should mention that um, I've been running um, Youth Voices, uh, which is another kind of aggregate blogging uh, situation uh, for a number of years and and one of the questions uh, immediately that I have is is can we do um, a quad blog between you know larger entities as well as um, so just uh, put that out there but I um, want to run uh, to tomorrow here and Sue uh, Waters is with us welcome Sue. Hi everyone and um, I'm EduBlogs Support Manager. Um, EduBlogs is the largest um, educational blogging platform and we cater for uh, all, all blogging sectors and people use our blogs in a huge range of different ways so it's really hard to describe all the different uses uh, that people are now using them for. Um, we get when, involved when you say, with... So when you say our blogs, are you, do you work for EduBlogs or how does it work out? Yes, I'm, oh, I'm, I am EduBlogs. <laughs> okay, you are EduBlogs. The EduBlogger. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forget my ignorance. But go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just one of the many people in our team. Um, we, we, we supply uh, blogs throughout the world and our, our team is pretty much spread through uh, almost a large number of countries throughout the world so that we can um, supply the 24-7 support that our users require. Um, because there's nothing worse than uh, you're trying to get organized and uh, you, you blog, you're having problems with your blog. So uh, I'm the, the, the main front end of the, the person who's dealing with most of the support requests. And so um, that's why I do a lot of work with all these different types of um, types of challenges where we're connecting teachers with teachers and students with students because um, the more support we give to teachers, um, the more effective they are with what they're doing. Uh, because what we, we there's a definite link between how well students go um, with how proficient their teachers are with these skills. You, you can clearly, I mean, every year with the student blogging challenge, and I'm sure David sees it with quad blogging, um, the teachers have a big impact on on how successful it is. Mm. 
Jump in, folks. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, add on that, really. I mean, that, that's Good. one thing I'm seeing uh, here in the UK is that, you know, every blog needs a champion, I, th I think, and within a school set up, even if there's a champion in one school, you see um, a lot more success. Um, and so that seems to be part of... Uh, a key part of the success is having a teacher that's enthusiastic about it, and what you get back from the children. I don't, you know, there's a mixture here. Part of it, I think, is the fact that the teacher connects with blogging and the teacher gets it. Therefore, the students have a much more excited teacher about what they're doing. Um, and then the other part of it is the actual globalness of the blog, and that you know that all comes in, excites the children and the teacher, and it just creates that magical. Um, atmosphere that we all know because we're here um, that exists when it all works, you know, and that's something that is magical as a teacher, isn't it? And that making that work really uh, generally comes from the the teacher getting those skills right. So the more we upskill skill them as to them understanding what it's about and uh, taking the step by step approach um, that people like myself and Linda and Gail advocate where it's a step-by-step -step gradual increase in skills um, makes it successful. That's where your teacher um, challenge and the EduBlog student, student challenge is really, really helpful. And the other component that's really helped me is the parent component because, yeah. you know, um, a lot of them, although parents are very uh, versed in Facebook and things like that where they're very comfortable with it, even now, this is the fifth class that I've had, very few of them participate in blogs, have ever heard of a blog, follow a blog. So I do a lot of parent education. I run these family blogging months two times a year where we dedicate the whole month. We try and get parents and grandparents and cousins and everybody involved in a family blogging month so that that other piece is in place where the parents are supporting the writing from home if they want to write from home. and and. A lot of them do. It's like magic, you know. I don't want to make extra work for kids at home, but a lot of times the lessons or what we've posted or a photo of the day, the kids are excited about it and they want to write. They choose to write and they can do it from home and with parent support so they're practicing quality writing too. So it's bringing parents in and educating parents yeah. in that as well. Totally agree. I was just thinking from the, just listening to what people are saying about um, going beyond the one champion teacher does anybody have um, suggestions about involving more the more teachers within the school so the whole school gets involved because often we, we, we get one yeah. teacher who really runs with it but we, maybe we, they we don't see get... yeah we actually see that happen with our edublogs campus sites so so the, what happens is they'll get a, a an edublogs campus site for the whole of the school and then they take a rather than what Gail's doing which is a school district they get it for the school and then they they do a whole of school approach mm. so then there's a, there's a very big emphasis that that blogging's what they do and generally that blog follows that student through their entire school history so yeah. we have a similar so they, thing where the whole school has a site and they can use it throughout the school and they can move between schools as well. But it's just getting that culture. You, it, the teachers is there. You were saying well, having it, the teachers engaged is one key part. Well, the, in in these sorts of cases, it comes from the top and yeah. it's a decision from the administration. Um, it, it, and, and some of you know some of these ones um, are actually quite successful. Um, and they, they're generally more likely to do them as e-portfolios, and they'll use them across multiple <laughs> units. What, what we found, what we found at uh, Heathfield, is that um, it, it seemed to work well when people didn't have to do it. Um, that once, once yeah. I was doing it, and that was very much a, a year group thing for me in my class. Once another teacher kind of was. Putting the head around the door, going, well, "What's all this you're doing? You know what? You know, showing a bit of interest." That was kind of the hook for me to go right. Well, come to me after school, and we'll we'll just go through it now. You know, and have half an hour. Very informal, but you know, we're all into technology, and we've probably all done staff meetings or inset training where we've said, "Right, we're going to do this," and you get the folded arms, 
All oh, right, well then, shall we? Yeah, that's, that's you again, is it? Yeah. It's all right for you to do this stuff. You're a geek. You that does, that stuff. doesn't yeah. happen in the United States. We... <laughs> we, 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 we do have a couple of, um, you know, like some are more successful and, uh, and, and than others, but we do have a, a few really classic examples where they've taken an entire school approach with a very strong technology team supporting it. Um, so we've got one, uh, one based in the Czechless, Czech Republic that does it, um, and we've got the guys in, um, from Kim Kofino School uh, in mm -hmm. Japan that do it. Uh, I think we can all remember the earthquake that they had in Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, as a re you know, all the at that particular time, all the students in Japan, um, because they were at an international school, a lot of them left the school, um, but they were all able to continue connecting and doing their schoolwork through the, the blogging platform. Um, so there are examples where people take a whole school approach, but it does take a lot more work. Yeah, I mean, I was, and they, you know, and they generally have a very strong support team. Right. And I, I'd, I kind of want to ask you really as well whether you guys think that um, I would rather in my school um, a year group don't blog for a year rather than have a really negative experience of it um, which could lead to them being switched off you know for good um, and what's nice uh, well what was nice at Heathfield was that we had every child had a different experience of blogging in every year it was different it looked different the teachers had different um, tools they liked to use, and so there was a very different experience. You know, and some year groups were quite, um, you know, well, when I say weak, just weaker than others, or not as strong as others. Um, but that was okay. You know, that it was an experience, and so long as they weren't being turned off, that was the main thing. They would hit key year groups like year four or year five or year six. That when they, that's when they really had a, a fantastic blogging experience. Experience and it kind of built up through the schools quite organically, like what you're talking about there with you know a graduation of of the skills that they're learning from year to year. That kind of organically happened, um, you know, which was quite lucky because it wasn't. Planned. Actually, yeah, one thing that you know that you when you talk about that that age group, one thing we see time and time again is the the best age groups are actually. Generally, the, some of their most amazing stuff comes from the younger students. So you can see some really incredible stuff happening with the year two, year threes. And um, often some of their work can, can be a lot better um, than the, the, you know, some of the high school students because teachers like Linda are focusing on, on the quality. Mm -hmm. And you know, one thing that I recommend you know, I haven't been super uh, successful at getting lots of people blogging. I haven't, and it's, it's been a disappointment for me because I see so much value in it. You, mean, pe you things, mean people around you in the school? Yeah, yeah. Okay. In my district, there hasn't really been. I've taught some lessons on it. I have a, a wiki where I, t you know, teach from, but I haven't had the interest. And I, and what I have found is that if people pair up, if they end up having a partner, a teacher partner that they can work with, that they can kind of support one another and troubleshoot and share the responsibilities, then it, 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 it seems to work better. Like at my school here, there's another teacher that watched for a while. Now she and I kind of work together and one week I'll make the post or you know something we want to cover a lesson and then she'll just copy and paste it on hers or we'll help each other with ideas and generate sometimes you get a lot of comments and then sometimes you don't it just kind of goes like this but you're there to support one another in a little little group but if you're on your own it's hard it's harder to get people to do it yeah so I think it's important to identify certainly at Youth Voices too um, that we're much more than um, blogging we're about communities of teachers working together, which you just described very well there, I think. Um, is it? I think that's true. Um, I, I want to identify that uh, Susie Boss has joined us. Welcome, Susie. <laughs> She's you, waving, but in case, uh, in case she speaks up, uh, she can introduce herself there. Uh, Hi, you, ki you kicked uh, some of this off back in September in an mm -hmm. article in uh, Edutopia, so thank you and welcome back to this conversation as well. Um, can, can I identify, because um, some of the details, I think, uh, 
uh, get interesting in terms of are we talking about class blogs? Are we talking about you know Kim Calfino's blogs, for example? Are, are, were those individual blogs that those kids were using? Um, yeah, so it's, aggregated so, together, or and then how does how how would individual blogs that are aggregated t together work with quad blogging? You, you uh, hear some um, of the details I'm asking there. Yeah, yeah what what we find is on our platform is that we we have different approaches depending on on what what they're doing. So generally. Um, Generally, you're more likely to, if somebody's on edublogs.org, um, and probably the same with Matt, someone kids blog. If they they're just an individual teacher um, with their own class on edublogs.org, whereas we've got an entirely different product which Gail uses, um, which is Edublogs Campus, um, which is more likely to be an entire school approach or an entire school district approach. So, so um, occasionally you'll get some schools that will just stay on edgy blogs and have all their blogs on edgy blogs. But when it tends to be a more of an entire school approach, they'll 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 have it on on another site, it's, and it's and they use it differently. Driven? Is that mostly teacher driven? Because I know like kids blog, mm -hmm. you're saying that's more student driven, mm -hmm. and I know um, youth voice is very much student driven. And from our perspective, students have their own pages, their own portfolio. Yeah, so I mean, the, yeah, that. that it, 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 it varies, you know, like, um, you know, it could be class blogs or it could be a class blog with lots of student blogs or, you know, it could be individual student blogs. So it, it really, what, what we see is, is pe people use it differently. Um, people find different ways to connect with each other. There's no one recipe um, that you can say. I was... It's, um, I was thinking about the student role and the point that the teacher made, I'm uh, sorry, I can't remember your name, um, Linda, um, Linda, about the, the work involved in checking the blogs. Do you ever involve students? And David, I don't know if David, if you did in your school, you said in the year five and six, the older primary students. I have, um, you know, I started out with one class blog and as I, you know, grew as a blogger and started to understand why I took on this other 365 uh, blog that I've been doing and I am at, I couldn't you know it's really up to the teacher what they can handle what works for them I am redlining as far as you know the time I can put into classwork and then also have a life so yeah, see I, whether the students so could I, actually check other students whether you'd ever well, considered what that they, what we end up doing is I let kids who are really participating a lot on the blog and really showing an interest and let them earn their own blogs mm -hmm. and what happens with that you know four or five kids will earn their blogs and other kids will have more places to blog sometimes they offer guest posts to some of the other kids in the room so it's really kinda however you want to do it but I, as second and third graders not all of them can handle the responsibility of it. I certainly couldn't take on any more. So I've chosen to let parents who want to and their child has earned it take over. I'd also say that, that there's two different approaches to, to this whole, you know, yeah. monitoring student blogs. Some people moderate all comments and posts before they're ever published, where, they, where other teachers take the absolute opposite mm -hmm. approach and they moderate afterwards and they look at using it as a teachable moment. So, you know, it, yeah, it yeah. gets back to your comfort level and it gets yeah. back to the requirements of your school district. Yeah, exactly. In my, in my school age. district, that would be unwise to um, not moderate comments. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you know, as I said, you know, different people have different opinions. You know, a few years ago, the school of thought was that um, you don't, you know, that, that, that the, the, those that advocated not moderating posts, for example, had that belief um, that, that moderating can, can slow down that, that whole process of writing. Well, it does. Well, yeah. if, um, yeah. I don't know if I could just ask something whilst we've got Good. so many talented people in the room here. But um, I, I had an, an idea. I just, I'm not te technically gifted enough to go through with it, but some of you may be. Um, is that a lot of high schools in the UK don't seem to blog. Um, the quad blogging school, high schools that come into quad blogging tend to be Canadian, um, uh, American schools, Australian schools, um, but UK are quite shy of it. And I was I've been talking to a number of high school teachers about this, and came up with something. If if we could get 
high school students who are contributors on a blog to have permission to authorize another contributor's blog post, then then schools will be a little bit more um, willing to give out um, blogs to departments, to children, to pupils, because there's a bit dual responsibility there that they can. Um, you know, uh, I'm a contributor, so I'm a student. I can create a blog post. I can publish it, but it sits somewhere until another contributor looks at that and thinks, yes, I'm going to approve that, and they can approve it. Um, and the teachers that I've spoken to said that that would make their school have a go at it because they're too frightened to give, they can't moderate all the posts that a high school is going to produce. But well, that, that is the biggest, the biggest um, issue with the, uh, the high school students that people talk about is the, the sheer number of students that they may be managing. I can't even well, imagine. Well, I was going to say, you, on Makewaves you can do exactly that. The students can approve other students' work. They can be promoted to be senior reporters so they can check and approve other students' work. And we nice. have it in both at primary and at yeah. secondary level. Mm -hmm. um, but also between schools. So we've got one network where, as a transition project, high school students are going into the elementary school and they're working with students and they're then approving the, sec the primary school students' work. So it can be done and that's one way. There's a student in Scotland who is a high school student who set up and run the whole media club in the school and they tra he trains other students to moderate and create content, but he's also training the teachers, um, and he uh, he won a, an award with the Times Education Supplement uh, this year, and he's doing some great work. And that's all te that's all student driven, I, and I think that that's why I, was, I think this getting the students and all the students from the high school, they could help moderate at the at the elementary school, and that gives you this connection between that transition as well. So that's certainly something which we're doing. That's that's one way which we we that's approach. That's a great that idea. Quest. That's a great idea. Um, I'll circulate a couple of links to those examples later and, and Lewis's his, his work as well is, is really interesting. Is it Lewis Phillips? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you meet him at the awards? Thing? Yes, he's a yeah he's a Yeah he's quite he's quite um um uh, Talented young man. I don't think there's that many students who are quite as able as him. So, um, but that model is certainly something we, we're trying to replicate that on scale. Getting students to run the clubs, and run the blogs, and get the older students to run it back as well, because it's a great mentoring thing. And then we're bringing in badges for that as well. So they're using Mozilla Open badges to reward that activity as well. So the students, uh, Linda, your idea of students have to earn the right to have their own blog but mm -hmm. well, that could be done through badges as well and then the older students can then um, if they've taught other students or they moderate they can earn badges so we're, we've got those implemented as well and that's that's how we're kind of trying to create a bit of a the teacher still has godlike powers around that <laughs> so they can still they edit Shut delete, it down. moderate, yeah. and suspend That's everybody, a great idea. retract everything. So they, they, you can still have a, an omnipresence without having to be <laughs> in there. So I think that's, that seems, for us, seems to work. Uh, I don't know how that works for everybody else. I know, Paul, in Youth Voices, you don't moderate at all. You post-moderate, is that correct? Yes, that's that's how to say it, yep. We post-moderate. Um, and, and we do a lot of teaching along the way. You know, a kid came in today and said, you know, I, th this... Uh, this rap star in, in the neighborhood just uh, put, put a video, can I put that on Youth Voices? Let's look at it. Is it appropriate for third graders to, to look at? And he said, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And on it, and it was used over and over again. I thought that was appropriate. Uh, he said, I guess it's not. <laughs> uh, you know, so <laughs> there's a lot of They're that learning. Kind of, there's a lot of teaching that goes along the way, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so yeah. I, I was but, just yeah, going to go back to the high school question. Yeah. Um, I was going to just say to David that um, with high school, they use it differently than primary, and so you generally see it being used at, at, on a per subject basis rather than um, how you would see it in primary mm -hmm. school. So, you know, it might be used um, for uh, 
languages or or maths or English or something like that. Yeah, I mean the the teachers I was speaking to, they were coming up, we're trying to find the ideal solution, you know, that how it could be used. And one we looked at was possibly, you know, that journal, like a journal, a learning journal. So they've got every child has a blog. And you, you know, one because the teachers only have for some of the teachers, for example, art. They only see those students for one hour per week, mm -hmm. um, and it's you know we've got to. It's difficult. Have, isn't have, it? have you seen? Um, I'm not going to say his name right. Um, Darren Kirpatra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so he. I I like that approach with the older grades, where you have a a class um, for some of these high school grades, um, where you have a class blog, um, and they rotate. Students writing on the, the the blog, where the students' role in in that particular case is to record a, a, what's happened in the lesson. Um, oh, okay. That, okay. Yeah, but but they become quite competitive with it, so they they become um, competitive in terms of I'm going to make sure that I get get the best note taking. <laughs> and so that is, so um so the, so the, in that sort of case they also have will have a, a chat facility on the side of the the blog as well so the kids are, after school can be chatting to each other and helping each other with their homework and stuff so those some of those sorts of things really work work okay. really well it's finding the right motivation what motivates an individual a class yeah you know it's, it's you know i i think that the the key really that that what we see is that you know there's there's not one set way that you can do, do this and we're seeing um so many different variations of how people will do what they're doing how much Sue, media do people use can i so i just want to push back on that a little bit and say that while that's true, and certainly from the perspective of where you know where you are with EduBlogs, I think I think it's really important that we identify what certain kinds of blogging affords and what other kinds of blogging does not afford. Um, you know, so so I think that's that's worth tearing apart a little bit because because um, what so, doesn't work? I, I say again. Do you mean what doesn't work? No, I, I mean what it, what it affords. So, so, so Darren's work is great for um, reflecting, on, and it's mainly with within a math class, I think, and that yeah. that feels really important. Um, but, but, um, but there's still like a curriculum that the students are um, are are addressing there, and if that's what you want to do, that's that's all cool. Um, but, but there are ways to use blogging to kind of. Um, Rethink curriculum and recenter it um, on students. Well, definitely, more. yeah, so, Def uh, definitely. Yeah. And, but and and that's you know that really is the whole point I'm making is that that um, you know every time I turn around, so somebody's amazing me with how differently they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's, there's mm -hmm. really. You, you you really can't, you know I'd love to be able to say well this is exactly how people are using blogs but they're not they everybody's you know working out their own different way to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah, since Susie's in um, in with us too, you know I I think blogging the possibilities of of it being a tool to enhance project based learning also are um, you know, so open. Exactly, and I think you know I've seen some of that where the blog is just um, part of integrated into the project, and students might be using it to reflect on kind of the process that they're going through, or um, you know a way to talk about team dynamics if that's an issue, whatever may be coming up. Or in some cases, it's a way to if if they're connecting with people outside the classroom for the project, mm -hmm. whether it's experts or community members, you know, it's a way to stay in touch and have an ongoing conversation and a kind of place to keep all of that together. So it just becomes one more aspect of project-based learning um, rather than a thing with, you know, goals for itself as something that's being, you know, a, a publishing project. It's really just an extension of the, um, of the project, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, it makes me think back to um, with the PB oil spill and, mm -hmm. and the... Um, BP. Yeah. 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 Right. And, yeah. The, uh, and well, the voices on the golf, mm -hmm. and how that kind of emerged um, and went so many directions, and um, you know, gave voice to students and connections, and brought in a lot of different perspectives too. Yeah, that's a great example. 
Right. I use mine at the elementary level for language development. It, that is that is the primary source, if you will. But um, you know, it's for language development, reading and writing, practicing, and then there's a lot of other applications. It's connecting to homeschool. There's a lot of geography, but primarily for me, that's where it's at is getting that practice with reading and writing. That's that's. But, the, but the fundamental, but, but we've gotten a lot of uh, different ways, but that for me, that's that's where my focus is. But your is. kids, your kids are authentic learning, in the sense that they they you know as part of their process, you go off in lots of different directions, yeah. and you're learning about you're learning about um, you know cultures all around the world that they wouldn't learn about if they weren't having that conversation, which is is really that reflective learning. Mm -hmm. And it really can go in so many areas. And you know, with each grade, with each different group, you know, you kind of look at them and you see what they're interested in. You see the avenues that you go down. And it's never exactly the same blog, even though it's been the same title for a few years. It always is, there are variations depending on the school, the, the culture of the class. And Linda, is, have you seen, you're talking about reading and writing and skills. Have you seen, has it, how have students with less, who are less able to write or reluctant readers, boys reading is a big thing which we're looking at in the UK at the moment. There's lots of innovative stuff on that. And I've seen, have you seen, has the blogging made a difference to that or, or, or not? Is it just the ones who are already engaged with it? It's, it's really of interest to almost everyone in the room because we have a little bit of everything. We have our class blog that's basically what's happening in the room and then we have that photo of the day which has really amazed me because there is a photo of the day. Sometimes the kids contribute it. Sometimes they're from people, our blogging friends all over the world. There's a little something for everybody to connect with, to write about. And, you know, like a lot of kids write about their pets. They'll send us a photo of their dog. I have a picture of my dog. They'll then individually take it. One kid will, answer, will write a comment as if it's their own dog from home. And then the other kids go, oh, you know, it's so funny. I have a dog. I'm going to write a comment back to your dog. And so there's like these really exciting things that happen in the room just with the interest that they come up with. If you look at that photo of the day, there's one called Reasonable Estimates. And we just took a picture. The kids, second graders, were talking about a reasonable estimate. Would it be reasonable to check out four books from the library or 40 books? And then I, you know, just as a challenge, I say, can you make up another one? There's like 36 comments on there with these kids challenging one another, and they think it's the greatest. So they're really motivated to read it, to compose, to write. It, it's like magic. If, if you let, you know, obviously I'm running it and I'm directing it, but there's a lot that's coming from them that's, that keeps that interest alive. And I never, well, once in a while I, I do require a blog comment, but mostly, you know, we make a big deal. We read together when they do post, when they do comment, and make it an exciting moment, but it just starts happening because of that. Mm. And, and every teacher that, that does does it well always reports back on the fact that they do see that increase with their students' skills. And the only thing that I have in terms of something I've, I've actually seen, I've always made it optional, you don't have to participate, but the writing proficiency at my grade last year, I actually really looked at it and I had more kids meet or exceed the writing standard at my grade level in my class and I, it is from the constant practice with authentic writing. It, it, it is. Mm. Uh, Matt, I wanted to get your voice in here a little bit. Um, can, uh, now, Kid Blog is, at least the way it was described when we talked last, uh, last month, um, it was two classes, uh, Margaret Simon was having two classes work together. Do a lot of people do that on Kid Blog, or is it designed that way? Yeah, so, um, so I think we, we mentioned earlier, I just want to sort of say where kid blog fits. We mentioned yeah. earlier that there's this idea of like a, a teacher blog and then a, a class blog where it's almost like students are guest writers and they sort of take turns contributing and describing things. Kid blog is sort of somewhere uh, in the middle or just a third version of that where it's a teacher that sort of has this umbrella class community that they create but that um, each student 
has their own voice within that. And so it, what's nice about that is it sort of creates this automatic community um, where there's this audience that by default is there because that's the sort of the, the unit of organization, which is the classroom. And um, so, so Kidblog really shines when you have, um, you have a, a class setting. And, and the nice thing is that, as we were just speaking about, uh, the reality is different. Different students are going to have different abilities in their writing, and they're also, they're also going to have different levels of contribution and, and motivation at different times. And so, um, if 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 it were a situation where a student just had sort of an individual blog that people would have to sort of go and find and, and get this audience driven to that, uh, and they weren't they weren't creating a lot of content on a regular basis, that would quickly sort of wither on the vine. And what's nice at Kidblog is that there, because you have this group of 20 or 30 people kind of all contributing content in different amounts at different times, it sort of keeps the, the heartbeat of that community and that content moving along, and, and, and it creates more of a, I guess, a dynamic conversation that can kind of ebb and flow. And it also makes the students feel, maybe a student who is less proficient in reading or writing, um, it, it lets them become an automatic part of that community and so it's really valuable from a motivation standpoint that way that um, you know their their voice may be different but their, their voice still matters and it's still an equal participant or an equal um, component of that class community and so but 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 it's still individualized um, so that's and, that's kind of the class blog situation and and the teacher has the choice to just keep it within that 20 or 30 students or yeah. to expand to another group, or to make it totally public. Is that right? Yeah, and so the so Kidblog has different layers of privacy. So it could be totally public. It could be just the teacher, and in between, you can sort of have just the members of that class. So students would enter their own password and have access to their whole class, or you can invite another class, or you know, any number of other classes to sort of have access as well, so it's kind of like members of your network, if you will. And so a lot of teachers who aren't quite ready to go fully public yet are finding ways to connect their classes in KidBlog by explicitly just having a you know a, the class URL and say, okay, these five classes have permission to log in and, and join the conversation. And so, you know, um, that speaks to, uh, uh, was it Linda? Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Linda, yeah, you, you mentioned you you know the, the pairing up and how that can be a big deal uh, in terms of keeping teachers uh, as part of the you know keeping them motivated and so this is a way to still have that privacy if you still want that but to still share the content between people that you you've allowed um, and quad blogging I think fits just perfectly with that because it it's sort of it's sort of this kind of procedure or routine that you get in and you join these four classes together and if you want it behind a password you can but then you each have permission to view and comment within each other's communities so it, it works really well with that. So if it's, somebody wanted to use da sorry, I just, I got David's form to sign up out of KidBlog they could do that. They, they could make public their blogs yeah, so what's great about that form is you can lit if you if you sign up with other kid blog classes on that form, uh, you can literally just copy and paste the URL and say these people you know can can join our conversation, but it's still it's still protected if you if you want it that way. Cliff, I, I wanted to check. Go ahead. I just wanted to I was check just in with say Cliff. Go ahead, Linda. Go ahead. David's idea is just it's mm -hmm. just brilliant because when I started out, I was casting a wide net and we were leaving comments for all kinds of classes all over the world. People would come back. We didn't know really who they were, what they what they were. We we just had this very uh, superficial uh, here and there comments and bringing them together with four where each person takes a week gives you a chance to really develop those friendships and and really ha have a lot of different blogs to navigate which is a great skill and then later in the year if you want to come back with your quad you can continue other projects it's I think commenting is a very different skill from blog writing as well we yeah. get a lot of very poor comments on the site um, on make so you get lots of comments, but there's lots of not great ones. So we've been doing quite a lot of work around getting young champions to think more and to try and encourage better, deeper. Start commenting. by teaching commenting skills. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, because we we don't have that access to teachers. So uh, from a you know, we've got three thousand schools or whatever there. So we've kind of sort of saying, 
here's ways in which we could encourage it on the system. So that's that's a real challenge for us. But where we we run a few projects with young champions where they they were identified as young champions and they were given a task, kind of like a quad blogging task, where each week they had to go to a different site and leave comments. And the feedback we got from the site where they left it is that students at that school started to leave better comments as well because they they start modeling that. It's where the behavior. blog comes to life is in the comments. That's where it really is is at. Or can yeah. be. Can yeah, be. no, it's, it's, but definitely I think that's where the quad blogging thing really is. It's the improving the I, commenting parts. I, I really think cool. I think the biggest challenge with new teachers starting out is they think that they have to do it all straight away. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, a step by step is always the best way. Mm-hmm. You know, just take it slowly. You're never behind. You, you know, it's better to put in the groundwork and do it well than to unleash all your students on blogs when you don't know what you're doing. David, I want to give you um, some more airspace here um, because we're we're coming up like seven or eight minutes um, to the end here. And to try to describe where your blogging with the students and other teachers in your building has been in terms of all of the different uh, situations that we presented. And where does quad blogging work best? Um, how does, if that makes some sense? What kind of blogging? Well, it, the, the beauty about it is that it's down to the four people in the quad to how they run it and what they do with it. Some people are just wanting um, a, somebody there to listen, to read, and to be a blip on the map. You know, that's all they want it for. Some people are running projects that they would like, you know, a global connection with a, with a class who's, who are near a river because they're doing a river study. You know, the requests come in. So it all really depends on what um, what people are signing up what they really want. Um, the whole reasoning, the rationale behind it is just to give people a hand in that opening six weeks, two months, when so many blogs that we see are set up and they die, don't they, because they're just left. The, the, the children don't get it, the teacher doesn't understand it, and it's just to bridge that gap between, because when I started, now Linda's mentioned it there, you know, had to really be proactive to get an audience for your blog and now there are even more blogs and so Twitter is there's a point where Twitter will become saturated with people sharing links and people are going to have to find other ways to develop an audience um, so it, it depends how people want to use it and there are so many examples there of people doing different things with it or having different expectations of it <coughs> This is maybe coming out of left field, but one of the things, one of the things, one of the advantages of um, having students write with, with not like not classes sharing together, is that I noticed that that um, the students who write on Youth Voices um, create audiences for themselves in their writing, right? So I'm just wondering. I mean, I really, Linda, I, I, I liked what you said about relationships and friendships earlier, and I think that's all really important. Um, but I also think it's interesting when students create that by what they post. Um, and, and, and I think that might be a different difference between elementary and high school. But, Can we get that with yeah. our student blogging challenge? Oh, yeah. it's so good. That challenge is a great one. Say more. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, the student blogging, can Linda or Gail, can you pop in the link for the student blogging challenge? So it's run twice a year over 10 weeks and um, students from all ages, so people can participate as a class or individual students can participate. Um, and uh, each week they have a different challenge that they, that they do and the whole aim is to help students and classes um, connect with each other. So that the students do get their own audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of the, the people that do our student challenge also do um, David's uh, quad blogging as well. So you often see a progression from the student challenge to people joining um, David's quad blogging. Mm-hmm. 
And Cliff, you have a challenge happening soon or now? Or, yeah. yeah, it's running now with um, Oxford University Press and the National Literacy Trust. It's called Your Monster Read. Um, and it's available, it started just UK, but it's actually open to anybody worldwide. Um, and the idea is for elementary and primary school uh, students to um, recommend a book. Uh, not, re not a review a book, but recommend a book to their friends uh, using any medium that they want to. So it can be an animation, a dance, you know, it can be a written piece. It can be anything that they want. It can be a poster, however they want to do it, make a scratch game, however they want to do it from there. Um, and then they post their entries online and others can then view it, leave comments, etc. And there's some book prizes, ebooks, vouchers, a visit from um, a, an author, that kind of stuff, feedback from an author's prizes for the best ones. But there's also a, uh, a, a most popular entry category as well. Um, so that's running until March and it's available now and it's um, make waves forward slash your uh, monster read so I'll send, I, I don't, I'll put it in the chat here but I don't know if I, I don't have access to the uh, main thing uh, I'll, it's a, I'll, I'll find it then that's good um, yeah. or send and, it to me yeah yeah um, or I have it already you send it yeah, <laughs> yeah. and but the, the other part is it, the, the reason for this is about creating a culture of reading within the school so that uh, bringing in that idea of you know parents as well and encouraging a, a culture of literacy within the school and recommending books and stuff and that that reading is a social aspect I think that's what's been running through a lot of this is the social aspect of reading it's not solitary sitting we, we, you know mm -hmm. you talk about books you recommend books you share they were the original social media weren't they books you write bits in the margins and you pass them on so trying to capture a bit of that with young people so that they get excited using the technology as well mm -hmm. um, but it's also available to teachers so you can enter as well Teachers can enter and you can make your own recommendation videos as well and there's prizes for teachers as well. Um, and there's some videos by authors who have done their recommendations. There's some great poems, there's some um, little films that different children's authors have made as well. Right. So yeah, I'd love to get any, anybody's thoughts on it. Um, please all get to, you know, leave your own comments or just have a look at some of the content. It's great. There's a, some great entries. There's a rap all about Harry Potter and on the Diary of a Wimpy Kid, there's a rap about Diary of a Wimpy Kid, that's the one, and all sorts of stuff. So there's some fantastic entries already. So hopefully it's going to create this fun social reading, not just reading, plowing through lots of books, which <laughs> is kind of very old-fashioned way of thinking about reading, that we think, anyway. So. Well, you, your, your contest has um, put the authentic audience at, at the center, so that's, that's nice. Yeah, hopefully, and it's, yeah, so young people will be inspired by other young people. And we, when we've been doing it, we found within our existing community that schools are doing loads of great stuff. We started just, there's one school called Brooker Primary, and I don't know, you know, the Booker Awards in the UK? Yeah. Well, they do the Brooker Awards, and they've been <laughs> doing this. So they um, award uh, prizes for the best book, but the students have to stand up and, and make a speech about why they've awarded that prize to the book and that's been filmed and then put online for others mm. to comment on so it's so there's obviously there's a lot of that stuff happening already and I'm sure you do some of this work already so just trying to tap into that really. It's uh, pretty amazing. Um, David I, I have a way to come back to you here again at the end um, and Gail I, I wanted to since well here's what I wanted to ask do do you think that somebody who wanted to do quad blogging, I mean, certainly they could go to quadblogging.net and sign up. Um, but should we do, should we like find four people in our own school district and start that way? Or should we just jump in globally kind of thing and just, you can answer that any way you want, but how could we continue to work on this? Well, I get quite a lot, a lot of requests of people coming in <laughs> okay. uh, with a number of people they already want to blog with or yeah. like a, a partner, just like uh, what Linda's saying, someone who wants to jump in with somebody or someone who's got a similar interest. And, and some people have gone off and used the concept um, in their own way, and, that, and that's absolutely fine. It's, not, you know, it's about trying to connect people and keep the momentum going, keep the magic going. So, yeah, I'm all for trying to build up 
you know, a quad or two with some like-minded people with a focus of something possibly, um, you know, a bit of a project on it. Uh, that, that would be great. And I'm not precious about people using the quad blogging mm -hmm. sign up. Um, it's not about that. It's, it's, it's more important. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to facilitate that to help that to be part of that. Um, What's well, quite interesting, the, the Department for Health um, in the UK got in contact with me the other day saying they would like to try and get nurses uh, blogging <laughs> in the UK about their experiences as students but also in different departments in the UK and they were looking at quad blogging as a model and that was a really interesting, um, mm. uh, a really interesting thing. You know, we as teachers, we blog, um, you know, although we're highlighting teaching and learning aspects of it but why shouldn't other professions be doing the same, learning, reflecting, connecting, and being excited about what they're doing. So, mm -hmm. if, if if we want to, why not? Why not do something? But you have it set up right now, right, Deputy David? The the, the um, spreadsheet, the Google form to go in and and sign up this month. Yeah, that's all set up now. Um, yeah. You know, that's something you could you could do. Just sign up, and in part of the notes where it says what you want, mm -hmm. you know, just highlight what it is. It might be the, you know, a TTT project, I don't know, and we'd connect through that way. I'd find us and put us together. That's all there on quadblogging.net. Um, or we can do it verbally or mm -hmm. any way, any way you'd want to do something connecting uh, project wise. Right. And I'm still way interested in two things. One is um, how. Kids who can who are working within Kid Blog and Youth Voices and Make Waves can and and maybe other kinds of like these bigger things can work together more, um, you know. Um, and and the other thing is, it does strike me that what's needed is curriculum next to this stuff um, and and ways for teachers to be sharing curriculum together. Um, Around all of this is really kind of strikes me as 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 something that would be interesting. I mean, maybe that exists already, but like, um, so how do you use these blogs? You know, um, how do like what are I, way at the beginning, Linda, you mentioned the blogging process. Like, I'd love to see that next to your kids' blogs. You know. <laughs> well, I have a wiki and that I that I can put in the chat, or um, and it talks mm. about my journey as a blogger. But I've really, you know, as someone said, you can take a blog in any direction. I have noticed that the comment section is where it can really happen, where learning can be creative and interactive. And here's an example of how I've I've changed as a teacher. We do biographies. We used to pick a biography and we did a book report and maybe did a bulletin board that nobody saw and that was the end of it. Now I taught a lesson on the blog about how to research without plagiarizing and we were looking at World Book Online and researching and then the kids had to leave a comment as if they were that person. So, you know, we had Bach talking to Beethoven, we had, you know, I mean all these different characters coming together if you if you search Bonanza, uh, biography Bonanza, it's incredible creative writing, it's interactive, it's history, you know, so I always look for ways to try and make something interesting in the comment section so it's not just, hey, I really like this day, so, hey, this was really great. I try to make it interactive between the readers. That, that's a wonderful example. Now, if I'm a new teacher and I want to do that, have you documented that somewhere? Yeah, on my wiki. I'll, I'll, wiki. I'll put the wiki in there and I kind of documented um, how I've taught ta commenting skills and how I integrate because with the standards here in the United States there are so many of them and time is limited and I try and dovetail a lot of what I'm teaching in the class right into the blog so that becomes a learning space, an online mm -hmm. learning community there and I have a lot of different um, I have reading examples, science examples, math examples in that wiki. Okay. And does anybody so, incentivize it through badges? Sorry, it's maybe another conversation, but um, well, that's what we're doing right now. We're identifying <laughs> other conversations because we're out of time. But go ahead, ask that question. Yeah, just because um, we're developing the open badge uh, system and uh, um, on Makeways, and it's launching at the end of January for schools, and they can earn 
automatically to students if they enter your Monster Read competition. So they submit an entry, they'll get a badge on their profile page, um, which says you've entered. And then we can do all sorts of things, like if you've had 10 blogs, you get a 10 blog badge, and kind of stickers in that, in that sense. But you can do more sophisticated accreditation and assessment through the badges and the open badges. Um, and there's something in there for, for both the teachers, this going through the process, the learning that you've done, Linda, you could have a teacher badge which would incentivize and structure for new teachers as a way to do it. And I think that may, may be a way for, to, to support new teachers as a way to, so they can see their progress in that sense, but also for students. So um, I'm just really thinking about that. And next, yeah. next week, uh, week after next, Linda, I'm going to be in Los Angeles, and so I'll, we'll try Ooh. and exchange details and see if we can maybe hook up there as well. Oh, I'd love that. Very cool. Sure. Ed, can I just say, Paul? Um, Go ahead. Yeah. What, one, one further. I think there's some. I think you've got something there, to be honest, um, because you know there's something there to help people connect when they blog. You know, there's a community there, but I think one thing people or teachers struggle with now that the you know, there's a big blogging community out there doing it, is the ones that are getting blogs now or the ones that will be getting blogs shortly will sit there and think, well, what am I going to do with it now I've got one? And some support, what can we do to build some support about what they are to do with it? You know, the curriculum, the ideas. Yes, if you're on Twitter, you can ask, but a lot of these teachers now are not. You know, they're in a district, possibly on their own, where there aren't any other, other bloggers. What can we do to make to give them the ideas for curriculum? Say, okay, try this. Look at this. This is what this is about. You know, there's, a, there's a, a lot of younger yeah, teachers maybe coming in who are going to be, hey, we can do this because they've grown up more with this, but don't have the <laughs> the, the <laughs> years that, of practice and the that within the school. The, the kind of the, <laughs> Sorry, that's not your experience, Sue. What do you mean? No, no, no. That's the actual biggest mistake you can make is that they've grown up with it, therefore they'll be good at it. No, um, no, I didn't say they'll be good at it, but they may be. They're just the, the technology. Maybe they just start to think. No, of it, but, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm actually, I'm actually calling what we're now seeing in the last two years the Facebook generation that expect blogs will behave like Facebook. So you know, we we have more issues now with. Uh, I'm sure Matt has the same challenge that, that they, they don't understand how posts and comments work and they expect the comments to be on the front page. Um, so as generally speaking, I find the older teachers often are, are much better with blogging. Yeah, I was just saying, is there a way of just pairing it up of sharing that, that info though? <laughs> Yeah. Listen, um, I, I, we brought up a lot of really important issues that we will continue to talk about all year, and we'll invite you all back, and um, we're going to have to continue this again. Um, but so, thank you all. I need to, I need to stop, <laughs> stop you all. I, I hate doing that, but I, I think we need to do that. Um, and and we'll we'll continue to talk. I hope. Um, I want to say that uh, we've been broadcasting here over the EdTech Talk. Uh, dot com network of the world, our channel of the World Bridges Network. Thanks to Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo um, for helping us with all that. Thank you all. Um, I, as I expected, we didn't get enough time to say what we wanted to, but um, <laughs> sign up for quad blogging. Keep going. I'm really happy to hear blogging is uh, alive and well. So great to great to talk to you all. Good evening, or good morning. <laughs> good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Nice to good meet night. everybody.